Begin scanning with the volume sign I. If you're first going to check your patient ID. Press that. You may get a screen asking you to close the last patient. If you, when you press the patient ID, just go ahead and click end exam if that's what you're looking to do. The machine will automatically put an ID in there for you if you have auto ID selected. Now you're going to put in your last name, first name, middle name, date of birth, age, gender. Uh, you have all that and then of course you're going to fill in the information here about your patient. I'm just going to go ahead and just put in a test patient here to get us started. Click test and then I'm going to click start exam. Now if I did want to go to a previous patient I will hit that patient key and so notice I, I hit that patient key and nothing happened. You're waiting for the patient screen to come up. Whenever you do that and nothing happens look over here because it is waiting for me to do something. It's saying, do you want a new patient? Do you want to edit the current patient? Uh, and, and that kind of thing. So right now we want to click start new or end current. Let's go ahead and delete the current patient and start a new patient. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if I wanted to go to a previous patient, I could click this search, page, search button here. Now I don't have any previous patients in there, but you can search by patient ID or the patient name and if I had test in there I do have a previous right there and then I can go ahead and double click on that one to enter the patient information and this is the test from today and then I can start a new exam that way and just click start exam the next thing I would do is choose my application by cl choose clicking on this application button here and it's going to allow me to select the preset that I'd like. As you notice, it is all up here too, but that will disappear. So along the right hand, left hand side here, you have a lot of different features, and including this S. If I push S, I get to a sub menu where there are further image optimization tools, and I will get to that in a little bit. So for now, I'm going to choose that application, choose second and third trimester, and begin imaging. Now, in the previous video, we did discuss a lot of these buttons and what they do I won't go into them again but we will be using the various features so if you don't know where to find some of these keys go ahead and watch that first video now when we begin scanning it when we do choose that probe it does go to a live imaging screen and on that live imaging screen we can adjust our gain here we also have the auto optimization key which will look at the image and try and adjust the TGC and gain as to best give you the best image. And I'm just scanning my hand here, which is why you're not seeing anything. We can adjust our depth. So if we want to go ahead and optimize our image, we have a number of tools. Most of the tools that you'll use to begin with are on this screen. We can use right here are going to have some significant differences on the image. Cross beam, which is just click X to get cross beam. And I highly recommend trying that in your imaging to see if you like it or not. SRI low and high, this is speckle reduction imaging, which will reduce artifact in your image and smooth it out. Can't really see here, but it does make your brights more crisp. Here we have extended view, and this is like a panoramic where it's going to get this blue screen, and you can say it's centered or moving. That's how it goes, and you'll see if you don't know what panoramic or logic view is, this isn't something you're going to use, but as I scroll across, you'll see that it extends the view of the image all the way through. I can hit freeze, and it gives me a wider viewing angle of what I normally would have had. It's, it's adding those together. I can change, unfreeze, and I can move on. I'm going to go ahead and exit this by pressing the 2D key, and I'm back into 2D imaging. Now I can get into the submenu as well, where I'm going to find a lot of the more in-depth image optimization tools such as persistence, edge enhance, rejection, or dynamic range or dynamic contrast. Your line filter for cleaning it up, you can change the CRI, that compound resolution. It's also known as the cross beam where you can increase the lines of sight. Your gray map and your chroma. You're going to hit exit to get out of that. If you want more in-depth ex explanations of what those do and how to use them, it is a good read. We have a full image optimization series on our website and that link is now on the screen but you can google 
ultrasound image optimization and it's typically the first result that appears up in Google. So you look for a Providian Medical Ultrasound Image Optimization Guide. And it'll give you a lot more information about what each of these functions do and how it can improve your image. If you are technical and you like those things, I highly recommend taking a look at what those do and how to best optimize your image. You can go ahead, exit here, click exit. We did go over your zoom, your focal number, and focal depth. Now let's uh, just take a quick look on how to save and store images. Go ahead and I'm going to hit freeze to freeze the image and it automatically goes to something called Cine Review. And here it says I have 12 seconds saved or 543 frames right here. So I can scroll back through that last 12 seconds of scanning I did and if I see an image I like, I'm going to go ahead and P1 and it went ahead and saved that image. It said saving in progress. And if I now go to my archive button here, which we discussed in the first movie, we can see that it saved. If I click on current exam, we'll get to this in a later movie, that it did save that image in there. And we will go into Sono View, which is what this called as the image archive and exporting in a later chapter. So anyway, that's just to save it. If we want to save a loop, I can go ahead and hit Auto Cine and then press start and it's going to play through that entire loop all 12 seconds that I had on there. Now if I want to save that loop I'm going to press the P1 key. Now the only way to save a Cine loop is to play back that Cine. It will not save it. If you just hit P1 it's just going to save that single image. If you are playing the loop and you hit P1 it will save that entire Cine loop to your hard drive. You can hit freeze and go right back to the live image. Again, just to save, we're just going to hit freeze. I'm going to hit P1. That's going to save that static image. And if I go back to Cine and I start it, I hit P1, and it will save that entire 12-second loop that I had on there. So let's get into the dual screen, quad screen, real quick. I'm going to unfreeze the image. To go to dual screen, I'm just going to press that the first time. Second time will give me the second dual screen image. And I can just continue to go back and forth. If I want to freeze it, I have this Update 2D where I can update it. And I can press that and also go back and forth between those two images by pressing this Update 2D. By pressing that Change Kidney key, I can change the position of this 2D. Right now, since I hit it again, it's giving me the three dots. If I press it again, I can change that position. And to get out of that, I am just going to hit the 2D button, and it'll take me back to the larger screen. Here we have our zoom button, and there's a couple different ways to go about the zooming. Right now, you can just press zoom. This zoom key will let you go closer and further, and it shows you the different zoom coefficients. You also have your HD zoom, and this is going to give you a region of interest box, and I can pan through, shows here, how I am scrolling through the image and here's the pan where it's going through. If I go to HD zoom it's going to show live all the way throughout. And that's it for the 2D imaging. Next we will get into M mode and Doppler with the Volusan Eye.